In this video, I'll cover the topics from how to choose a phone for gaming and emulation to every single detail that you need to know in order to set up your DIY handheld. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to set up your device exactly like mine or even better. Since this is a relatively long video, I'll put down the timestamps for each chapter in the description box. You can also find the related files in the description box. However, please don't ask for ROMs or don't ask me where to download the ROMs because this is illegal. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions. I basically check my comment section every day, so I'll try my best to answer you as soon as possible. Also, I have a Discord channel for those who want to join our community. So you may wonder why do we need a dedicated device for emulation or Android gaming? First of all, it is possible to have malwares in those modded apps or third-party apps that we have to use. So this is to prevent the leak of our personal information. Also, this can prevent us from damaging our main phone by all those malwares. Heavy gaming and emulation may consume our CPU and screen a lot. By using a dedicated device, we can extend the product life of our main phone. Last but not least, when we buy a new phone or have a new device, we will have to copy all the save files and data from the old phone. But if we have a dedicated device, we don't have to do that over and over again. So how do we choose a gaming phone? First of all, we want to look at the chipset. Phones with Snapdragon 855 to 870 generally give a very good performance for emulation up to 3DS and PS2. We also want to look at whether the phone is on Android 10 or Android 11 because apps like Citra cannot allow us to read files from the SD card on Android 11. Now let's take a look at all those basic knowledge that you need to know for gaming. The easiest way for file transfer is to connect your phone to PC with a USB. Next, click File Transfer. You should be able to see a screen like this on your PC. This is a demonstration of me transferring back all those backups to my phone. Next, we want to know how to get the developer options because developer options can be very useful when we have to deal with Game Pass or some third-party apps. First, go to About Phone in the settings and then scroll down to the build number. Most of the phones allows us to get the developer options by tapping it seven times. Next, let's look at how to install apps on an Android phone. The easiest way is to go to the Play Store and find the one you need and download it and that's it. But there are two more ways and we are going to look at that as well. So well, in the Play Store, you just click install and then you can click play after it has been installed. The second way is to install an APK file from your directory, namely your SD card or something like that. We will need a file manager first of all and then go to the directory where we store our APK files and then click the app that you want to install. If this is the first time, you may have this pop-up and you have to change the settings to allow a known source to be installed on your phone. After that, we can go back and install it again. We'll see this pop-up when it is installed and we can open our apps if it is successfully installed. Now let's look at how to install APK files with OBB files together. When we transfer the OBB file, please don't forget to also transfer the folder that comes with the file. We're using Harvest Moon here to demonstrate. First of all, just like the previous demonstration, we install the apps here. And then once the installation is finished, do not open it. Next, we long press the OBB folder to bring up the menu and then we click copy. You can actually move it, but it is safer to copy it. So now we go to the internal storage, go to Android and then go to OBB. Then we click paste. 
and they may ask for permission and we just uh, allowed it by clicking use this folder so that's it we can copy it here and if there is any similar um, if there is the same folder just skip uh, skip it or merge it uh, because I have already installed it so I have it here and we should be able to launch the app once we have moved the obb file to the directory now let's move on to the last method this is useful when you have to download the Citra MMG build or something like that. So basically we can download apps from the browser directly. So click it and then click download and just wait for it to finish the download. And then we can open it directly and click install. Or you can simply go to the download folder and then find the app that you have just downloaded. Just like here, click uh, download and then you'll find your APK file. So just click it and then click install, then you'll be able to install it. In the last part of this video, I'm going to talk about how to choose a controller for your gaming style. I have three different types of controllers here. The first one is a D-Shock controller that came with my PS4. So I'm going to quickly show you how to connect your controller to your phone so it's pretty easy and it is basically applicable for most of the controllers so first of all go to your settings and then go to uh, find the place where you can turn on your Bluetooth in my phone is in the connecting devices section so I can click pair for devices and then um, I just click the share button and the PS button on my uh, PS4 controller then I'll be able to find it and control it so it's pretty easy and straightforward once I've confirmed the connection on my phone then uh, the indication light of my PS4 controller will change a bit so you can see it's not uh, white anymore is a little bit blue and that's it and then you can just simply use it for gaming like Minecraft or you can uh, map your keys to those emulators. I also have an Apito N30 Pro here. This is one of my favorite controllers because it is very light and is very thin so this is something you want to bring outside I mean if you bring the PS4 controller it is a little bit bulky and you can have this clip to clip your phone on it however I was kind of regret buying, buying this clip because um, the controller is definitely going to be lighter than your phone so um, it feels quite weird to have the clip on because uh, it kind of uh, tend to fall to the phone side like this so that is not very comfortable and I personally don't really suggest using a clip like this so I would rather do it separately or just simply um, use another controller if I really want to have an integrated experience for gaming. So speaking of an integrated experience of gaming, I have a GameSir X2 here. This is the 2021 model with a different style of D-pad. It is using a USB-C to connect to your phone, so there is no time lag. Um, and it doesn't really draw all those battery from your phone, so this is quite good. It is simply plug and play. If you don't like USB-C connection, you can have a Bluetooth connection uh, with another model as well. 
I tend to use this controller all the time when I really use my phone uh, as a gaming device because it really feels uh, a lot more like a gaming device and it is it feels lighter when you have those grip and you can hold it uh, side by side with both hands. Moreover, it allows you to map the keys to Android games with their official app, so it's really useful. That's all for the basics and please check the other parts for emulation setup.